an amazing science. Motion graphs are often helpful in understanding motion and describing relationships of quantities such as velocity, acceleration, distance, and time. This video will help you make and analyze motion graphs. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how the distance versus time and velocity versus time graphs of constant velocity motion are different from those of constant acceleration motion. Here is a table containing the data of the distance traveled by an object per second interval. Before plotting these points, you should know first which of the two quantities is the dependent variable and which is the independent variable. Between distance and time, it is the distance that we need to observe as time changes and is dependent to time. When you are done classifying, remember to assign the dependent variable to the y-axis and the independent variable to the x-axis. So we put the values for distance under the y-axis and time along the x-axis. Just to clarify, I am using the term displacement here instead of distance because even if they are numerically equal, displacement involves direction of motion, which is also important in analyzing motion graphs. Moreover, when you will be making your own Cartesian plane, make sure to draw the vertical and horizontal lines with equal spacing among each other and assign the values with equal intervals, like in this case for displacement. The interval is by twos, but you can have by threes, fours, or fives, and so on, while an interval of one for time. Still, you can use interval like twos, threes, and so on as long as it fits to the range of the values in your data. Now that we have already emphasized the basic things, we will start to plot the points now. At point A, time is zero. So obviously, distance traveled is zero. So the point will be plotted at the origin. For point B, at time one second, the object covers two meter distance from the origin. So we locate one second time at the x axis and 2 meter distance at the y-axis. Here is now the point where the two components intersect. Same goes with point C, where T is 2 seconds and D is 4 meters. Plot the point where these two intersect, and here it is. Then, at T is equal to 3 seconds, the distance covered from the origin is 6 meters. And that makes these lines to intersect here. Finally, after 4 seconds, the object is now at 8 meter distance from the origin. So we plot the point here. After plotting all these points, we will connect them with a line. And this is what the graph looks like. This is an example of a displacement or distance versus time graph. The slope of a distance versus time graph represents the speed or velocity v of an object. Speed has a magnitude equal to velocity, but only the latter involves direction like displacement. In getting the slope, use the formula taught also in your math class, which is m equals y sub run equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Our y component here is a displacement d, so we can change y variable into d. And our x component is time, so we change x variable to t. So the formula will now become v equals d2 minus d1 over t2 minus t1 equals delta D over delta T. 
Let us use these values in this table to get a slope. For example, in the points A to B, the Y and the X components of A is 0, while in B, its Y component is 2 meters, while its X component is 1 second. Between points A and B, A is 0.1 and B is 0.2. So, D2 should be 2 meters from point B and D1 should be 0 meter from point A. While T2 should be 1 second from point B, and T1 should be 0 second from point A. Given these values, you can now substitute them in the formula to get the slope, which is the velocity. So, 2 meters for D2 minus 0 meter for D1 divided by 1 second for T2 minus 0 second for T1 results to a change in distance delta D, which is 2 meters over a change in time delta T, which is 1 second, giving a speed of 2 meters per second. Same thing will happen to points B to C where B is the point 1 and C is the point 2. So, D2 should be 4 meters from point C and D1 should be 2 meters from point B. While T2 is 2 seconds from point C and T1 is 1 second from point B. Substituting these values in the formula, you will have V is equal to 4 meters minus 2 meters over 2 seconds minus 1 second equals a change in distance. 2 meters over a change in time, 1 second, giving a speed of 2 meters per second. You will also do the same for points C to D and D to E, which are all giving 2 meters per second velocity. So to graph this, you still do as you did in the distance versus time graph when plotting the points. At 1 second up to 4 seconds, the velocity is still 2 meters per second. Plotting the points where these lines intersect, then connect these points will make a graph that is different from the DT graph. Notice that in every second interval, the velocity is always of the same value, which is 2 meters per second, meaning to say that it is constant. If the object is moving at constant or unchanging velocity, it means that its acceleration is zero since acceleration is the rate of change in velocity over time. Therefore, the slope of the velocity versus time graph represents the acceleration of an object, where A is equal to delta V over delta T equals V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1. As shown in this table, when we solve for acceleration here, 5 minus 5 equals 0 divided by the difference between 2 and 1 is equal to 0. Same goes with these values here. 5 minus 5 equals 0 divided by the difference between 3 and 2 is still equal to 0. The third one also gives the same answer. And this is how the DT and VT graphs look like when the velocity is constant or acceleration is equal to zero. Being able to understand a simple motion graph is very important to analyze a more complex motion graph like this. The points here are already plotted, so this is point A. B, C, D, 
E F G H I J K L M N and O now how will you describe the motion of the object in this segment Yes, you're right. The object is moving at a constant velocity and away from our reference point. What about here? The object here is not moving at all or is at rest. Now let's describe the object's motion in the third segment. The object is moving at a constant velocity, but this time it moves toward the reference point. How about this last segment? The object is moving at a constant velocity, but with a steeper slope because it's moving at a higher speed. And it's also moving towards the reference point and even went beyond it. Now, here are the slopes we got from this data. And when we plot these, this is how its graph look like. These are the points and their corresponding segments. Now take a look at the difference between the DT and the VT graph given the data. These two segments here represent that the object is moving at a constant velocity or not accelerating while moving away from the origin. The object here is at rest or there is no motion. The object's velocity is constant but it's moving towards the origin. The object is moving at a constant velocity here and it's moving towards the origin and went beyond it. What type of motion was emphasized in the previous example? That example shows a motion at constant velocity. How will the graph look like if the object is moving at constant acceleration? Here's an example. These are the points with their corresponding lines. The red line indicates a constant velocity. The yellow line indicates an increasing velocity or positive acceleration. The green line indicates a decreasing velocity or negative acceleration and the blue line means that the object is not in motion. We now got the slope from this data, and this is the VT graph, plotted from these points. Let us compare the DT and the VT graph. This is constant velocity, increasing velocity or positive acceleration, decreasing velocity or negative acceleration, and no motion. Let's review the concepts. Which of these graphs show an object moving at constant velocity? Which of the following shows an object with increasing velocity? Which of these graphs show an object at rest? Which of these graphs show an object with decreasing velocity? Thank you for watching and please do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button for your notifications of my other videos.